the music of your life with me, Darren Clark. We welcome Billy McCracken to the podcast. Good afternoon. How are you? You're How well? are you doing, Pat? You okay? Yeah, very well. Um, for those of you then that don't know Billy McCracken, how long have you been in Tenerife as an entertainer? Ooh, over 30 years, 32, 32 years now. And how have you seen the entertainment scene change? Minus COVID, obviously, but oh. did, have you noticed a big, big difference in the types of entertainers that you see? Massively, massively. I mean, when I came here, there was a minimum amount of entertainers, really, a minimum amount yeah. of bars. But I started off in a little bar called Molly Malone's down in um, Veronica One. And it was just, yeah, there wasn't as many. I mean, now it's just, it's crazy. Everyone's an entertainer. <laughs> they certainly are. They certainly are. What I'll do, I'll use that little bit as an just an ad fill for the, especially when we look at career and stuff like that. Okay. We look at beginnings. Uh, always, I love to start from your earliest memory of music. What was the McCracken household like when you were a kid for music? Whole family full of singers and musicians. Yeah. My mum was a singer musician. Uh, my dad was singer musician. I come from a travelling show people. You see. All right. That's where we started off. We, um, oh God, <laughs> my first recollection of music was I was about six years of age. I started playing the trombone. It was bigger than me. <laughs> you know, my old man, he bought this trombone. He went out one day and he came back and I was in this, it was an old hall we were in at the time. It was like an old show hall. And um, I was up on the stage just banging head out of this trombone. And he went, what the... F you know, <laughs> so that's my first recollection of, of music. My whole family were music people. We travelled all over Ireland uh, with a travelling show and we all sang and played and did sketches and did bingo and showed all black and white movies and stuff like that. And there was no entertainment in the pubs and no entertainment anywhere at the time. So I bet you have a lot of stories. A lot oh, of stories yeah. for people, but maybe it's not the king we can talk about here, here, well, and there. But yeah. the whole family, though, so all your family were musical, so you must have got a, such a diverse range of styles at a very early age. Yeah. I mean, my music style when I was younger was, oh, God, everything from Slim Whitman to Tommy Wynette to Chris Christopherson. It was a lot of country music, you know. And who was that? Who was that and responsible for that kind of music? Oh, I think that was more my dad's side of things, yeah. you know. My mother was more... She was kind of in that way as well, you know what I mean? But she, um, my mother was a fantastic singer. She won the Golden Voice of Ireland for, wow. yeah, which was a big, big thing back then. She was with one of the biggest bands back then, a, a band called uh, Mick Delahunty Big Band. Right. I mean, it was probably 20, 30 of them in the band, proper big band. But yeah, she was a fantastic singer, you know. My yeah. old man sang a bit, but yeah. played a couple of chords on the guitar. That's where I got from. Was it a big thing that you just all gather around the piano or you just all gather around some and just have a big oh, no, of those kind have, of things? No, or? no, we didn't have things like that. We lived in wagons, we lived in caravans yeah. and they were homemade. My old man made everything. Wow. You know, we grew up on the side of the road. <laughs> right, proper uh, travellers. Yeah. They, 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 oh yeah, yeah, yeah. We went from one village to another village to another village every week or every few days or every couple of days and then after so many years people just got to know us. But yeah. our parents were pretty strict. They sent us to school. I mean, I finished school at about 13 years of age, but from the time I was seven, I started school, I think it was about six, seven years of age, till about 13, I went to 36 different schools. Wow, but you still <laughs> always went to school, though. Oh, I always went to school, yeah. Was music ever a part of at school? Music was a part of the school thing, but unfortunately for me, I mean, I was, I was a musician all my life. Yeah. And I'd go to the schools, and they would have... A certain time of the day where everybody would play a bit of music and they'd gather everyone around, but I'd be sitting there going, oh my Jesus, yeah, get yeah. out of here. Do you know what I'm saying? And then once I started playing something, like I'd play the, um, the, the, oh, the I, I can't even remember what it was called, the um, thingy with the, oh, that doesn't matter anyway. The teacher would look and go, teachers, you can actually play. You know, yeah, yeah. come up to the front and I'd be like, oh no, I can't sit in here listening to all this. It's just a racket. You know, I mean, there's one thing sitting there listening to somebody that can play okay, yeah. but it's another thing listening to 20, 30, 40 kids. It's kind of a blessing and a curse to an extent. Oh, it was just horrendous. <laughs> but then there was times you got a few of them and they could actually play, yeah. which was a nice thing, you know what I mean? But no, music's been my life. All my life. Just I've, That's all I've ever done. And your two songs, as you just mentioned, reflect, I suppose, 
Yeah, my mother and father's taste. Uh, the first song was Sunday Morning Coming Down oh, this, by Chris Christopherson. Yeah. Was that, you said there was oh, one of the songs you would listen to? There's, Chris there's, there's, there's a story to that one, and I'll make it very, very quick. We were going into, we were in Wexford Town, which is in, in, in down the southeast of Ireland. And my old man, he was a sucker for, he loved secondhand shops and furniture shops and all that. And we walked into this place one day, and I heard this song playing. And I said to him, I was just, I was just a kid. I was a very, very young child. And I said, who is that? And he said, that's Chris Christopherson. He wrote the song. And I went, my God, that's amazing. I was just listening to the words. And honestly, this is one of the first songs I actually fell in love with the Chris Christopherson version. Johnny Cash did a version, but speeded it up. And it just never did anything for me. But the song itself, well, I woke up Sunday morning with no way to hold my head. Yeah, yeah. It didn't hurt. And the beer I had for breakfast wasn't bad. So I had one more for dessert. And that just got me. And I thought, Jesus, who writes songs like this? And, and how old were you then? How old were you then when you heard that song? Seven, seven years of age. So even the poetry of it oh, yeah. affected you then? Oh yeah. Well, I mean the words, uh, just, I, I was just fascinated by who can write a song like this? And then I listened to so much more of his music and I thought, my God, this guy can, you know what I mean? He actually sits and writes poetry. And your second choice, Michael Jackson, Ben. Oh. A bit of a complete left field for Chris Chris. Total, how did that one total, come about? Completely. Uh, all, all through my life, I mean, he was, he was he aged with me, so all through my life, Michael Jackson has just been an absolute hero of mine, you know. Was he the whole, is it the whole package, or was he was it the anything whole particular package. that he sprung out? The whole you? package, the yeah. guy was just fantastic, you know, even up to his later life when he got crazy and stupid, and people thought he was this, that, and the other. We won't get into that because that's just another mm. situation, but no, as a kid, he just fascinated me, his voice. And everything about him, he's dancing, the whole Jackson 5 thing. But then when he released Ben and I would just thought, oh my God, that's an amazing song. And he's singing about a rat. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah, we talk about, with other people I've sp I was spoken on the podcast, we spoke about either the, the style of the singing, how that grabs you, or the, the lyrical setup of the whole song, that creates an emotional response yeah. from you yeah. what, what's more important to you is it the way that the person sings or is it the lyrics or does it just everything together the package well the lyrics have a lot to do with it but the way how somebody actually puts it up puts over a song I mean emotionally and I mean the emotion in their voice it's it's down to the talent it's down to the person yeah. if they can sing or they can't sing I I probably disagree with a lot of people where they go oh that guy's amazing oh, I would turn around and go well he can't sing for a you know? And do you feel a bit like, why does everybody else think that? Because yeah. I've kind of been in that position where I've thought, I he's terrible, but people are good. Like, yeah, I really, really do, yeah. So do you think you've been spoiled as a kid, music-wise? Or were you just lucky? Or were you, what was it meant to be? Um, I think I was just lucky it was meant to be. All I've ever been is a musician and singer. That's all I've ever done in my life. Could you have went another way? Could you have... Completely yeah. I could have, but there would have been bars involved. Oh, there you go. <laughs> On that note, we'll do your two songs. Is As we move into obviously your school and your th thirty-six different schools, you said. Yeah, yeah so, thereabouts. So let, let's go from there to when you became. I suppose when you left school at thirteen. Yeah. Did you rebel a little bit? Oh, I was a, I was an absolute mother. So <laughs> I wonder because it's just showing you some choices, and you went from Chris Christopherson and Michael Jackson to the Sex Pistols and the Clash. Yeah. Was that the music around that time, though? Was that the? Well, the, yeah, it was the music around the time. I mean, there was a lot of bands out back then. I mean, XTC were there, Squeeze were out upon a particular time. There was, I mean, the Clash. Obviously, you had all this punk era, but I loved listening to every type of music. You know, I was a punk at heart, but really everything. I mean, even back then, I was a Pink Floyd fan. I was. You know, but what was out, was yeah. out. And I was just, you know what I mean? I was just one of those kids because I was out actually playing in pubs in those days, even though I was at school. Right, yeah, I was just about to ask you. Know? So that was, even though your career started quite at an early age then. Oh, yeah, yeah, I was out. We were making a living for the family. Um, we stopped the show uh, at an earlier age. I think it was about 12 years of age or something. The council basically went, because we settled in this particular place at the time, and the council came and said, you can't stay here anymore. We're going to give you a house. So eventually they gave us a house, a nice council house in a place called Duncannon. And um, yeah, we eventually, we, we eventually settled. And um, the music situation then was, 
you you went out and you played music in the pubs. Right, that was like that's you had to do that. that yeah, 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 yeah. We had no other way of earning a living. Course, we didn't, yeah. you know, we didn't know anything else. Only go out and play music and sing. Yeah. So that was basically the thing. So we were out and we were doing stuff with our parents and stuff. And then it all stopped. And I started going out there with my brother. He played drums. My sister sang. She played bass guitar. I played lead guitar and bit keyboards and stuff. And then the music side of our show changed. It was down to me. I would. I just wanted to play everything. I just didn't want to do what I was doing with my parents because that was just no. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> absolutely. In the last two sections, you've mentioned three different instruments. Now I know that you're a multi instrumental person. Was that part of the family upbringing as well? Were you just like pick this up and try this and try that? You said you played the trombone at one time. Yeah. Or did you just fall in love with music generally? And you wanted to try everything. I just wanted to try everything. I played everything anyway. I mean, yeah. as it stands, I, 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 I. I it's roughly about 24, 25 instruments, you know. But uh, as somebody said to me one time, I won't mention his name, he's a great friend of mine, he actually worked here one time, he said, do you know what? He said, I only know one person that plays more instruments than you. And I went, well, who's that? And he went, Prince. Wow. Prince played 36 <laughs> instruments. Wow, well, there's a target for you. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I'm sure if you gave it to me, I would manage it and I would master it. Do you think it time. takes... Um a certain way of thinking to look at an instrument and go, okay, I can do this. Because if I look at a saxophone, for instance, mm -hmm. I really want to try it and I think I'd be really good at it. It's a hard instrument. Yeah, no, that was what I was going to follow. It's a, it's a really tough instrument. It is a hard instrument. And I did play the trumpet at one time and I just, I fell in love with the sound it made before I actually picked the instrument yeah. up. Was it the same if for you? If played well, it sounds awesome. Yeah. If not played well, it's the biggest racket and horriblest <laughs> noise. The trumpet is a fantastic instrument because it doesn't have chords. You've only got you've got three little stomps. Yeah. And that was with three little stomps. It's everything. You've got to make so many notes come out of there. It depends on how you blow it, depends on how you know it's a fantastic, it's an amazing instrument. Yeah. You know, and you don't play chords. I mean any any brass instrument to that fact you don't play chords with them anyway. Yeah. But to have three little stomps and to make so many notes out of those three. It's it it depends on your blowing, it depends on your you know. That's right. It's a, it's a great instrument, but no saxophone. That's a hard instrument. Absolutely. Uh, that's a hard instrument. When you when you I'm interested when you settled down when you, your family got a house, did your musical style change then, or yeah. do you think you learned a lot more being on the road as you were as yeah. travellers? Yeah. Do you miss that? Um, you do you know what I miss it now? Yeah. Back then I didn't. I thought, well, if we're in a house. We've got a house. We've got a bedroom. Yeah. You know, we were a big family. There was uh, there was seven kids, and um, we were in this little three bedroom house, and we we're just sharing rooms and stuff. But yeah, the music style it did change when we settled because I could listen to everything and anything. I mean, the the thing with my musical situation was a lot of it wasn't actually to do with the music that I liked. I mean, we're going to go on about again. As I said, the Sex Pistols. The music wasn't that fantastic, but the production was amazing. Malcolm McLaren. Oh, the production yeah. was, you know, you sit and you listen now and you put a good pair of headphones on and you listen to any song by the Sex Pistols. The production was fantastic. It was kind of a, they said, well, let's talk about them now than the Sex Pistols. They were, the, I suppose they were an exercise in futility at the beginning. Oh, yeah. Because it was like, let's do this. It was more of a... Imagine doing that now, putting a band like that together now. It would sound amazing, and it probably what was it like the effect they had uh, those by that band had on you at that time. I mean, it, it wasn't as such because I mean, being Irish, it wasn't as such their rebellion against the Queen and the government and yeah. all of that and everything else. I mean, that never bothered me. At, it just never dawned on me at all. It was just how they looked. It was just how they did things. It was just the fact. They went and didn't give a flying. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. Was the Clash the same then? The oh, yeah, the Clash. Like, yeah. The Clash were very musical. The Clash, very, 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 very great musicians that yeah. a lot of people didn't Did there realize. seem to be a different class compared, as in up, not up middle class compared to yeah. the Sex Pistols? Yeah, very, very much so, yeah. yeah. But the Clash for me were very musical. Some great musicians came out of the Clash. You know? And that's what I like about musicians when you're talking musicians about the love that they have for other musicians. Oh, yeah, yeah. And it is the mutual, it, it's mutual oh, yeah. love it is because yeah, yeah, yeah. you know how much work they've done to be at that standard. Yeah. Or yeah. you take a great great pride for the that they've got the gift 
and yeah. you might be behind them on the gift, but you can see the gift there yeah. in all its entirety. There is nothing better than standing on stage and playing with musicians that are at your class or better. Yeah, you kind of turn around and go, Because yeah. when you finish, you just go, yeah, yeah, oh yeah. But when you're there on stage, I have been, even in my younger days, I've been where people have asked me, oh, can you come and fill in for it? And I did, you know, and you're standing on stage with, uh, as I said, I can't mention any names because I was yeah. going back a lot, a lot of years before I came here, Jesus. But you're standing on stage playing with guys that just didn't crack the whip at all and you're just, you just couldn't wait to get off the stage, you know. But to stand on stage, I have many, many times with guys that were absolute class. It just made you a better musician. Yeah, you know. And we'll come to that the next stage. But for this stage, for the two songs. When you were working at such an early age. Did you just keep learning more kind of musical styles or was it just the bands you used to keep coming you used to learn off your musicians that you played with? Or? Just whatever came by. I mean, at the time, music was just so wide. It was real musicians. Yeah. You know, it wasn't just, oh, here's a band. There's four guys standing on stage singing to you. No disrespect to anybody, but, yeah, yeah. you know, to me, four guys like i mean westlife great guys great singers you know boys on the likes of them i mean backstreet boys great voices the whole lot but to stand on stage and use tracks that's not a band if you go to say if you look at boys or like i say all, dis all due respect for them no disrespect yeah, them yeah, at yeah all. exactly yes if you go from them boys to men do yeah. you see a difference vocally that's what i mean oh, yeah do you see where that musicianship because yeah, that's what exactly what i see i see where the voice because people use the I believe people use the voice as a voice, but mu musicians use the voice as an instrument. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. And that's yeah. the difference I yeah. see. Would you I mean, agree? Most of men were just amazing. They were yeah. fantastic. They, you know, they were just on a different level than all the other, let's say, boy bands. Yeah. As we reported, and I'm using. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Do you think their musical style of voice men was too complicated for this kind of market at the time of the boy bands, or do you think the boy band just weren't at that level? Yeah, look, at it. I think it was a situation that they were just too good for what they were doing. Yeah. They were too, they were ahead of their time. You know? I, I believe so as well. I mean, ahead of their time, um, the younger generation wanted the teeny bopper, wanted these wee good looking boys to go, ah, yeah, yeah. you know, and scream and do all that kind of thing. Whereas boys to men went in the studio and they sang and went, right, okay, I'll do it again. Okay, I'll do it again till they got it right. Instead of just walking in and going, right, that'll do. Um, just fix it. Yeah. You yeah, know. No, I like that. I like that. That 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 exactly sums it up for me. Between, uh, without sounding, without without disrespecting people, I don't mean to, but from this, I understand. A singer to a musician, yeah. and when I say the word singer, mm -hmm. a musician can use the voice as well. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, I, I've yeah, got that. yeah. Um, did so because the ch your choices have went from the Clash and the Sex Pistols to <laughs> anything by Pink Floyd and yeah. the Eagles. You kind of matured in that time. Then. It wasn't. I always loved the Eagles anyway. Yeah, I've always loved Pink Floyd anyway. What did you like about the Eagles? Oh my God, Jesus! You take five guys that can write songs like that and play like that. I mean, oh my God! I mean, <laughs> I remember hearing a, a, a very clip. Of, it's on the documentary, I think. I think the song Seven Bridges Road. Yeah. And they were all standing there in one mic, and they're all singing different harmony. Yeah, yeah. And I'm yeah, like, yeah. oh, they could do that as well. Yeah, oh my God, their harmonies were fantastic. You know, they were just one of those fan. See, the thing is, what got me into the Eagles in a massive, big way. I was a huge, huge. Here's another one, Linda Ronstadt fan. Oh. And Linda Ronstadt, I mean, I can you under this? She's a fantastic singer. And as she matured, she even got better. And the Eagles were what, basically her first backing band. All oh, right, I didn't know that. Oh, yeah, 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 oh, yeah, yeah, right. yeah. I mean, they were her first backing band as such. Yeah. And after touring and stuff like that, um, the boys decided, look, there was no animosity here with Linda Ronstadt and, and, and her management or what. But the lads said, look, we've decided we're just going to go out on our own as the Eagles. Wow. And management. And she said, hey, do it. You deserve it. 
and they did, and wow. that's what happened. But the boys really got into the drugs and alcohol and stuff yeah. like that mentally. But oh, Jesus, did they write some great songs? Absolutely, like that. you know. You certainly did. Did you? So obviously, the more that somebody works as a musician, and the more styles that they receive, the the mature they get as a musician. Did you feel that development coming through? Um, because you end up in Tenerife. Yeah, well, how I ended up in Tenerife is another story. <laughs> that's, a, that's a totally different story altogether. Jesus, I could write a book on that one. <laughs> Musical-wise, though, did was is Tenerife easy? Yeah, well, for me at the time it was because it got me away from a lot of things. Um, yeah. uh, I was going through a bad patch with marriage. I, 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 I I split up with my wife and whatever. I was in the pub one day. Here's a quick story how I ended up here. I was in the pub one day. One of the boys that was met me said, he said, look, there's somebody looking for a singer in Tenerife. And I went, yeah, whatever. So no interest whatsoever. So um, I was doing a gig actually in uh, a place called Waterford, the Bridge Hotel. This guy came up to me at the end of the night and said, hi, my name is so-and-so. Yeah. I'm from Tenerife. I spoke to you on the phone the other day about coming. I went, he didn't speak to me. I'm sorry, pal. So I ended up sitting, one of the boys rang up and said he was me. Right. Now this guy said, ah. look, in order to do an audition, you need to come to Dublin. And he said, look, in order to do an audition, you need to come and see me. Being oh, cocky, and it was not me. Yeah, yeah. So this guy came and saw me and went, I want you to come. And I said, look, yeah, well, so I sat down, spoke to him, and I said, I'll do six weeks. Yeah. That's what I'll do. I'll cancel six weeks gigs here. I was really, I was like really busy back home. Yeah. And um, he said, yeah, that'll do. So that was it, and I stayed. But how long? <laughs> <laughs> X amount of years. It's 32 years now. 32 years. What have you learned from when you got here in terms of music wise? Do you believe that you've stagnated to a point or have other people that have came over here enhanced your experience? Awesome. I think in a way I've I've kind of um diminished slightly because of what I've had to do over the years. I've yeah. worked in the Irish pub scene, you see. So a lot of it is just I sing skiddle idle and skiddly diddly and skiddly idle and sing fields of and rye and sing this song and that song and you, you just kind of get to a stage where you're in this mode and you just go Jesus not again I have to do this I have to do this I have to do this this is why I'm actually liking my gigs online at the present moment on YouTube because people are asking for the same old shh, rubbish yeah, yeah. but I still get the chance to do stuff that I like to do yeah you know what stuff do you like to do? Oh, everything, everything. You, from, let's take out everything the field. apart from the Irish skiddle. The yeah, just about to say, <laughs> let's take out the fields of Rath and Ryan and all that. Yeah, like an Eagles song or a Clash song or if, things like that. Would you like? I'll just shove that in anyway. Just, I'll throw a bit of Pink Floyd in here and there. Yeah, I throw a bit of Billy Joel in. I throw a little bit of uh, everything. Everything. I can't really make a list of. You know. We go to your song choice. You said anything by Pink Floyd. Yeah. It was, it was, once again, that's one of those bands that you can instantly fall in love with the musicianship and the yeah. songwriting, the, oh, yeah. the, the talents. Yeah. The choice is too wide. So I start shows shine on you, Crazy Diamond. And you said also anything by the Eagles, and I completely say agree when you say anything by the Eagles because they yeah. I just think every song they've done has just been absolutely awesome. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I chose one of those nights because yeah. not the. Most obvious of songs oh, but somebody would play, but I really like, like the song. Oh, yeah, yeah. If you could do anything different in your career, what would you want to do? Would you have wanted to work in the countries? Would you have wanted to work on ships? Would you want, was there anything else that you felt, or is it just no. this is how it is and you're happy with it? The ships don't appeal to me. I uh, to do. I like going cruising. I like going on ships for a holiday. Yeah. Me and her, we do it once, twice a year. Actually, obviously not this year. Last year, we've had we they're all cancelled. But we love doing the cruises for holidays. But to work on them, no, no, definitely. It looks not. tough to, for for me. It looks it's tough. A hard it's, it's, I it's, to do. it's it's a really 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 hard job, you know. I do want to ask you what I didn't before. Um, what was the first record that you bought? Do you remember? Oh my God! The first record that I bought. Oh. The first record I bought, or the first record I stole. This is always the hardest category talking about favourites because as a musician you must have a lot of favourites. <laughs> 
I've extended the word. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I mean, seriously. Well, I mean, where do you start with the favourites? Well, I, I suppose is the kind of we start with the kind of music that makes you emotional. What kind of music makes you emotional? Oh my God! There's 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 so many. There's just, there's uh, actually there is a particular song I sing, and I sang it last night. And I made it the very end of the night. I was doing a ballad set last night on um, on Facebook. It's a song called um, "The Old Man." All right. That's obviously about. It was it was originally by the Fury Brothers, but it's a very emotional song to sing. Yeah. I did a gig. It's a few months back, live on Facebook, and um, I, I I had to finish. I couldn't finish the song. And I had to stop. I just went, apologise and went, that's it. I burst out crying in front oh. of like 200 people <laughs> listening, staring at me on Facebook. And uh, yeah, but stuff like that, yeah, emotional songs. Mm, there's, there's a lot of emotional songs, but I don't really get that emotional about them. But this particular one song just murders me, you know. Mine, for, mine funny enough, is, I forget who's done it now, on the Timmy Dumbo, the song's called Butterfly Kisses. Yes. And it's all about a, a guy going to give his daughter away, yeah. and he's went through many important parts of her life. He says, yeah. and now you're getting married, and you, yeah. I can't, you're not oh, yeah. mine anymore." And it's just the emotion yeah. through his, through the lyrics. Yeah, I yeah. think that's what gets us. And yeah. I often wonder whether, I suppose, I keep asking this question, and the same answer keeps coming back. Whether it's the the lyrics or whether it's the music, it's, it's the package. It's when that perfect package yeah. comes together. I believe. Would you? When you, you get a perfect it? song written, penned, and you get the perfect melody to go with it. Yeah. That's it. That's it. You know, you're screwed. You can't stop it from getting better and better and better and better and better. Yeah. But there's so many songs out there, lyric wise, brilliant lyrics, but the melody that goes with it is just. You think, oh no, you could have done better on that, like. As we well, go to one of your first, your first song for favourites, two beautiful songs may I add. Um, we'll come to the second one in a moment. Wonderful World by Louis Armstrong. Oh, that is one of those songs, isn't oh, it? Talking about. All my life. That's one of my. That's just my favourite song all my life. You know. Yeah. And it just, it, it, it's one of those songs. That just, it just gets you. Oh. Very short as it is. Yeah. It just takes, I believe it takes you somewhere else. Yeah, it does. I mean, I've sung that song from the time I was a kid right up to, I mean, if somebody even asked me for it now, I would sing it for them. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, Pete, uh, back home, I used to get this guy, he'd come up and he's going, can you sing that Irish song about that, that girl? And I'm like, what, 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 what song is that? He said, do you know that song about, you know, woman, that, that trees are, and he went, what, what, trees are green, you know that, you know your woman. <laughs> I see trees are green. <laughs> Fabulous. Red roses too. And I was like, you're a tosser. <laughs> Fantastic. Yeah, yeah. And the other song you chose was uh, another Eels one, Desperado. Desperado. Yeah, yeah, what was the crap oh, behind that one? Oh, in that's my... a fantastic song. Um, again, Linda Ronstead did a version of that song. There's so right. many versions. The original version of that song is... It was very, very, very stripped back by the uh, the Eagles. They did a very, very strict, stripped back version of that song. And it was years later then they added more into the harmony side and the nice piano and everything else. But the original was never overly impressive, but I still loved it. I always thought that song, it can do so much better. And years gone by, the, the production wise and the piano and vocals harmonies you name it just got better and better would you like having a crap at arranging because i know you do all yeah you do all your own tracks i do all my own tracks i do all my own arranging stuff i used to do a lot of session work back home in studios yeah you Um, you miss that i I do because i was getting paid well for it (laughs) i I got paid really well because instead of people getting like six seven different musicians in to do certain parts yeah they got me in to do the whole so instead of paying like 300 quid a head yeah. Which is like nearly two grand, two and a half grand for X amount of musicians. They get I I got a thousand quid for doing Wow, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. You know what I mean? Yeah. It was great money. Yeah, yeah. And it was tax did free. It, it, well, yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> did it push you though as a musician? Did oh, it yeah. push you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because you must have got some arrangement and you thought, All right, okay, this is a challenge. I'm yeah, on, yeah. Well I was in the I was in the studio doing stuff for people and sometimes you never knew who it was. And you were in, you were sat and you were waiting and you were doing whatever and there's somebody walking you go, Ooh, okay. Yeah, no, so when the things start now I know, know who it is. Yeah. Now I know well, who it is. The um, uh, we're talking about obviously Tenerife and how you. I suppose your mind's not as stretched as it has been. But are you are you glad in the way it's not? Yeah, I'm more laid back and easy and just you know what I mean. Were you, as a person, were you a bit more stressed then? Even though you could do the job very easily, were you still? Was it still? 
all the time, like when you were doing your session stuff and your arranging? Um, it wasn't a stress, to be honest with you, the, the, the stressful thing was not going out and doing the studio and doing the pubs and clubs and stuff that I did. That wasn't stressful. The stressful part was going back to fucking boys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man, uh, yeah, man. <laughs> The reason why I like this section because we get to find out how weird people are and, <laughs> and give me pleasures. It's that kind of music where you not feel ashamed to talk about it, but you go, really, you like that kind of music? Oh. But you've actually covered a lot of bases anyway in terms of what music you like. And then we go to your guilty pleasure. Yeah. War of the Worlds, why? War of the Worlds, I think it's... I'm sure I know the answer, but why anyway? Why War of the Worlds... I mean, it's in the title. Oh, yeah. <laughs> War of the Worlds. A friend of mine gave me a, a double cassette, if anybody remembers what a cassette is. Yes. A, a double cassette of War of the Worlds, and he said, listen to this. So I put the headphones on. Oh, Jesus, it's, this is, it only just came out. So I was, I was pretty, pretty young at the time. And uh, I sat down, put the headphones on, and I listened to this, and I just went, oh, my God. Yeah. What did I just, what did I just, you know, and there were so many people on, no one would have ever been, oh my Richard God, this, right in the very, it caught me from the first two seconds, I thought. Well, that's the bit I've chose, the, oh. e the eve of the war, that's the bit I've chosen. Oh, and he's got that richness, the voice, and then when it, when the violin, when the string oh, yeah. section comes in, yeah, yeah. you're like, oh my God, God. Mm. the goosebumps all just go. Oh, yeah, yeah. I used to play that live on stage, actually, with uh, six keyboards wow. going at the one time. But yeah, it's fantastic. But you go through it, and I mean, you've got David Essex in there. Yes. You've got Phil Linnett in there, or Philip Linnett is. Oh, yeah, yeah. You know, you've. I mean, you've got so many people on that. Oh my God, I was just. I, I couldn't. I, actually, I couldn't wait to get to the end of it so I could start it all <laughs> over again. It was it one is. of those things, you know. Seriously, I mean, the music. I, I mean, even. Um, um, oh, forever autumn. Oh, oh, oh my God! You know, forever autumn. Oh my God! You just go, oh my God! What? That's all I can say about this. Yeah, yeah. Oh my God! You know, but the whole the whole production was fucking amazing. Did you ever see it live? No, I um, I had the DVD of yeah. it was live, and um, it was oh, a serious production where they did the hologram. Oh yeah, yeah. They did the hologram of um, of. Uh, what's his name? Liam Neeson. No, was it, Liam Neeson? it was no, no, no. It was the, the no, the original. Um, oh, Richard Burton. Yes. Yeah. They did the hologram of Richard Burton, and I, I just kind of went, "Oh, Jesus!" That's. It was, have you seen that one? No, no, no I've not seen that. Fantastic. Version, no. Fa yeah. Oh, absolutely fantastic. You know, I must try and pull that out. I'll, I'll send it to you. I'll give it to you. As somebody that is an arranger as well, though, that must have been when you heard that and when you start analysing it. Oh yeah, you so, it just encompassed so many different kinds of genres, isn't it? Yeah. And yeah. I, then I wondered if that's what it was for you, how everything fit. We talk about the perfect marriage. For me, that fitted perfectly with the worlds, all the different styles of music, yeah. and a great story yeah. with great characters, but stars that are carrying these characters oh yeah through. it was fantastic i mean you had it was very 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 movie orientated as regards the music it was very orchestrated but yet you had this amazing rock feel to yeah. every every style of music was in there you know from classical to rock to just just a, mu a movie script it was just you could just sit there and listen to it and picture everything that was going on through the voices you get, carried, the you get carried away don't you you get yeah. lost you get taken to that place oh, I'd, 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 straight away the first 10 seconds you, you, I just close my eyes and you can just see everything happening Yeah, just listening to the music and listening to the voices and it was just amazing I mean uh, this it's just, a guilty pleasure but it's such a good guilty pleasure oh my it? god such a good guilty pleasure and I actually got the uh, I, st I have it I have it I still I still put it on every now and again you know what I mean yeah, yeah. Home and Sometimes I like to have a few beers and I'd smoke a, a cigarette. Cigarette, yes. <laughs> a Colombian woodbine. Absolutely. And I would just put it on. I've got the um, the updated digital uh, DVD version. It's been remastered. 
Oh. Well, it's a bit longer and there's a few extra bits here and there. Oh. I sound a bit like the boys from um, the Big Bang Theory. Oh, have you watched this? No, but it's got an extra it's 10 got, seconds. Oh, I love that, I love that. It's got an extra 10 seconds of a clip of blah, blah, blah. blah. Oh, but this, the, the, the new version, it does, it's remastered, remixed, and it does have a few extra little bits in there. So I love sitting there back. I just, honest to God, just turn the lights off, close your eyes, and that's it. Oh, those are the bits of music that you feel glad that you've heard. Oh, Jesus. In your life, you can go through life and go watch the bits of music. Oh, you're no, just no, so no, thankful no. that you've heard. No, if I missed out on that stuff, I don't think uh, I could ever... I don't know. I'd probably have to take it out on somebody because it'd be like, why? <laughs> Absolutely. Why well, did I miss out on this? You know? Oh, fantastic. I mean, what, what What? makes a musician then? What makes a musician? People ask me that question all the time. How do you... I don't know. Because it's something I've only ever done. You know what I mean? That's like... Uh, do you believe there's no formula to being a musician? I think practice plus such and such. I mean, I can't turn around and say I think anybody can be a musician or singer. I don't think that's possible, you know. But there's nothing stopping somebody from trying. If you try hard enough, you will succeed it, you know. Absolutely. So we'll finish off then. I could talk, we could, I mean, I could talk to you for ages and ages. It's been a pleasure. Thank you very much, Sharon, for being on the podcast. An absolute pleasure. <laughs> Thanks, everybody, by the way, for listening and uh, putting up with me. I hope you understand me with my accent, by the way. Cause, oh, I've got my accent uh, as well. No, <laughs> <even thought. laughs> you know what I'm saying? Before but, we do go, um, your Facebook page is? My Facebook page is just Billy McCracken. Billy McCracken. Oh, Billy McCracken profile. I've got three pages. I've actually got Billy McCracken. That's my profile. Yeah. I've got Billy McCracken live. I've got Billy McCracken live music. I've just three pages there, you know. And there's the links to your YouTube. And there's also my YouTube channel, which is again just Billy McCracken. If you go in and put in Billy McCracken, I'm there right at the top of the list. Thank and you very much, Billy. There you go. Go to the Facebook page and go to the YouTube page, and you'll hear loads more great songs. Thank you very much, Billy. Thank you, Darren. Cheers, pal. Music of Your Life with Darren Clark. It held high, looking so fine.